December 27, 1996, friends and co-workers from the mission station at Ukarumpa came and joined us for the dedication of Mark's Gospel. This was an important beginning for our work among the Mese people. After a short early morning flight, our friends were greeted with a longer early morning hike down to the village. Promises kept give us strength to accept this burden of bearing the light. Beside us, a strong friend Barnabas, he will be that sure shoulder to lean on. The promise we share is our burden to bear. Once we had all arrived at the village, our friends greeted us in a traditional way with traditional songs called Sing Sings. Here they lead us into the village along with invited guests from throughout the language area. Friends continued to lead us through the village in a series of different sing sings. It was interesting to watch. They were so decorated with mud and fire ashes that we couldn't recognize many of our friends. This song for celebrating Jesus' victory over the grave. They've also spelled out God's good news in the Messe language on their backs. Sort of like a living Marquis. Decorating themselves with feathers, shells, long glasses, and long grasses and flowers, our friends begin the final dance before the dedication service begins. Traditional dances like these usually go all night. Today they were easy on us, and this one lasted but an hour. friends to come and worship God. For once their hands were bound, but God has come down and freed them so that they can worship. These are the words of their song.
After the sing sings were complete, the service began with singing hymns of praise. Pastor Esoke began by reminding us that worshiping God is one of the highest callings in our life. Kathy and I looked at each other when he reminded us that today we were dedicating but the first book, and 66 yet remained. At long last, Mark's gospel is lowered from a pole. The imagery here is that God's word has descended from heaven to us, and it is our job to bring it out throughout the village, throughout our language group, throughout the country, and throughout the world. to illustrate my point that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Here for the first time, the people saw the word of God in their own language. Reverend Gegere Wenge, another invited guest, reminds us that though we can't see God, we must believe in Him. Kathy shares with everybody that this is not a project that we work in alone, but that there are many people at home who support and help us in this work. They also desire that the Messi people could read and write in their own language so that they can understand God, what God is saying to them. Yonu Wenge. Yonu Wenge is blind, but he was the first man to begin working with us in the translation of Mark's Gospel. He had long looked forward to this day. He stands here with our co-translators as they receive the first copy, the first copies of Mark's Gospel. After distributing copies of Mark's Gospel to our co-translators, we then began to give copies of the Gospel to teachers that we had trained. We reminded each teacher that it was his job to bring this Gospel back to his village and help others learn to read it. It was a good day, it was a long day. It was good to see the prayers, hard work, and sacrifices of so many people bear fruit. Thank you for your support in helping us bring the word of God to the Messiah. In his powerful name, the promise the Bible has spoken. We must understand.